healer. Heal thyself. And you can do this because you are a healer and if you're watching this video and you think maybe this isn't related to you because you're not a healer or you don't know if you are, everyone is a healer, in fact. <laughs> um, surprise! Because everyone does their own healing, ultimately. Hello everyone! <laughs> Welcome to Thank You Universe. I hope you're having a good morning, or a good day, good afternoon, good night, whatever time it is for you. I uh, woke up a little early this morning, I don't know why, but, you know, I couldn't fall back to sleep, so I went on my morning walk, I pet some of the neighborhood dogs, had my tea, and then I wanted to make a video for you all today. So, today's topic is how to heal a healer and I feel this is a very essential topic so there's a lot of healers out there in the world and a lot of healers that are not healed in the, of themselves and that's why we have a lot of the emotional chaos going on right now so please stick around for the whole video because we're gonna talk about a lot of fun stuff so how to heal a healer a lot of healers end up being in a very bad state because the world needs healers so much right now because there's so much just negative emotion, negative self-evaluations, shame, people don't feel good about themselves and the healers are supposed to be doing this healing work but basically they're getting dumped on by everyone and not being appreciated. So a lot of times growing up in your family, let's say, you were given the task of caring for others and being the healer for others because you just have this natural predisposition to be a healer. And so maybe you had some people who weren't fully integrated with their emotions or just straight up broken people in your family. Could have been your parents, could have been a sick sibling, it could have been uh, your grandparents, someone in your family that just needed help and they saw this beautiful quality, this light in you, that you are a healer, like it's amazing. And then they, they tried to take it from you. I mean, they didn't ask, they desperately clung to it. And so a lot of healers, they learn early on that this is their role and this is what gives them value. So you learn that you are valuable because you are able to give hope and healing to other people. That's what you get reinforced with, positive reinforcement. Uh, sometimes negative reinforcement. You're expected to. But maybe your mom is just like, oh, Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for helping me out. You know I always need so much help. And you learn, oh, this is good. Giving of myself is good. This is what gives me value as a person. This is my role. And it is your role. And that's awesome if you are a healer. But then what can end up happening is people come to expect it. People required of you and a lot of times healers are very sensitive and you can feel that people want you to be there for them and heal them and so you learn that this is something that you have to do. Um, at some point we learn that this is the only thing that gives us value and this can lead to a lot of negative feelings and codependency, this idea that you have to be there to fix people all the time for you to have value and you lose your inherent value of just feeling good enough just being you because you feel like to have value you have to be the healer because people take it for granted and then they expect it and then when you're not the healer for them oh all of a sudden you're not this wonderful person anymore you're this person that oh why aren't you listening to me why aren't you helping me you're so selfish you how could you just 
see my pain and not be there to take care of it for me. So people want healers to do the work for them because they become dependent on this source of energy. And they don't want to do their own work, they just want you to make them feel good in the moment because that's easier. So basically healers in our world in this day and age, probably it's always been this way, who knows. Um, healers get really taken advantage of and really truly abused and a lot of healers can develop a lot of self-esteem issues because of this abuse and this negligency and expectation that they have to be a healer, they have to be the one to fix things for other people, they have to be the one for others to dump all their negative emotions on. So healers can have a turning point where they become resentful of their task in life, their calling, their existence. So a lot of times broken healers or damaged healers because nobody's broken because we can always catch it back together it's gonna be okay you're not broken but these damaged healers they end up being some of the most depressed or angry or hurting people and a lot of times they become addicted to chemicals or sex or uh, eating disorder, or athleticism, or high achievement, or a lot of times they become really low achievers, so no one expects anything of them, so they don't have to do that work of people extracting healing from them. And so, a lot of healers need healing. So, then we have this society, this culture, where our natural born healers are some of the most damaged people in the whole society, these highly sensitive people. And then we just have all this emotional trauma going on in society because our healers aren't even there to do the healing. So healers a lot of times can come to be resentful of people wanting them or needing them, or maybe they'll be very selective and pick one person that they want to heal, like a lot of times healers are drawn to very damaged people or narcissistic people or people who have experienced childhood traumas and they'll just select that one person to become codependent with and heal them, but everyone else gets thrown by the wayside because they're tired of all the neediness, but they choose one person who hopefully will reciprocate, but a lot of times that doesn't happen because healers get into situations with people who desperately need healing and aren't at a healthy place to be an equal partner because that's what they're used to in their lives. They're used to these relationships where they're giving out way more than they're receiving and they're expected to and they feel like they have to. So in these intimate relationships that they choose, they end up getting drained and taken for granted and oftentimes abused. So healers can become these very hurt people and they can become um, self-isolating and maybe just want to cut themselves off from the world. So I remember before I had come to certain realizations and integrated certain feelings and traumas that I've, I have experienced as a healer I used to fantasize about being a, um, a hermit, basically, like just going out into the nature, staying away from society, no people, and just living completely alone and not having to deal with all of the people and all of their problems and all of the drama. So on part of this path of healing, healers need to learn to be alone and to be selfish and to take care of just themselves and this is a part of the process and it's not a necessary part of the process for everyone but in certain cultures, certainly in western cu culture, this can happen a lot and so healers need to learn I'm not responsible for anyone. In fact, you can get a little angry. You can even say, hell no, screw that. I'm not helping all these needy, wanting people. I'm gonna take care of myself. And that's a part of the process. We don't wanna stay there because 
these people aren't bad. Everyone needs help and everyone needs healing, healers included. So you eventually will come out of that and realize that everyone needs healing and you will begin to do your own emotional work and become more conscious of the ways that people have expected things from you and people have been codependent with you and you'll have to do your shadow work and even come to the realization that um, wow, you know? I thought the only thing that gave me value in life was the fact that I heal other people but that's not true I'm valuable for myself, just being me, for myself and that healing and emotional work can take a lot of time and a lot of realizations. Maybe you need some talk therapy or some self-help books or meditation or all of it. It's going to be some work. In fact, healing yourself is going to be one of the hardest things that you do in your life. There's that um, a beautiful saying. I've heard it from YouTuber Amanda Flaker. I don't know where it comes from, but the saying is healer heal thyself and you can do this because you are a healer and if you're watching this video and you think maybe this isn't related to you because you're not a healer or you don't know if you are everyone is a healer in fact <laughs> um, surprise because everyone does their own healing ultimately so there are different modalities of healing, whether you're a writer, whether you do music, whether you're a therapist, whether you're someone that just tries to give inspirational messages on YouTube, whether you're a mental health worker, you become a psychiatrist, a doctor. Everyone is a healer and there's different modalities of healing. But everyone has to do their own healing ultimately, and that means everyone is a healer. Just some people are more called to helping others on their path of healing themselves. That's usually what people refer to as a healer, but everyone is a healer, so we're not going to be elitist about this. <laughs> everyone is a healer. And so we learn to heal ourselves. And then once we feel safe in ourselves and our cup is full, Right? Because remember, you can't fill someone else's cup when yours is empty, when you're drained from everyone needing things and wanting things from you all the time. That's when you can actually take a look at your path and your journey and how you've kind of distanced yourself from being a healer. And then you don't have to come back to it if you don't want to, but a lot of times you will because you feel this resonance inside you, yes. I love people. I want to heal people. I love people because I love myself and I love the beautiful healing that I've experienced myself and I want to share that with other people. And so you come back to this place of wanting to heal people but with a new mindset. Not one where you are afraid of people. Where you see people as needy and wanting your help and draining you. Because you've learned to develop these healthy boundaries and understanding you're not responsible for people but then you can choose to heal others because you want to and let me tell you that is the most beautiful thing not healing people because you're expected to not healing people because you think that will give you validation and you'll receive love and uh, self-esteem from your work of healing others but because you choose to simply because you choose to because you know how beautiful healing is and you can see that it's needed and how you needed it and how it's helped you so you want to give that to others and that's what's truly beautiful about being a healer who has healed themselves so uh, it's been a lovely morning. I hope everyone is doing great. I hope any healers out there that need to hear this message got something out of it. Anyone who got anything out of it, awesome. So thanks for tuning in. Again, to thank you universe. Please give us a like and subscribe to this channel if you want some more. Uh, 
Much love to all my ally, ally, allies out there. And I will be seeing you on the next video.